Hey guys, Levy here and welcome to the first video of the Albion Online Weapon Overview series. In this series I'm going to cover each one of the 15 weapon masteries you can progress in. With each of these 15 masteries having 7 specializations, we are looking at a total of 105 different weapons you can choose from, which is a pretty overwhelming thing for a lot of beginners. So hopefully this series will provide some useful information you can learn from that will make your choices easier. And to help you navigate, I've put a bunch of timestamps in case you are only interested in specific parts, but I do recommend you watch the entire video if you are interested in this specific weapon tree. If you end up liking this video, consider subscribing, which is free and supports the channel. If you wish to support this channel even further, you can do this through Patreon. More information about that in the description below. Today we will look at the sword tree, which is one I often suggest to new players who want to play a melee weapon. I feel like it's a very solid choice that covers all the different content you can do in the game whilst giving you various options in which sword you would like to play. What I mean with this is that you have multiple options amongst the swords that are viable for solo content, small skill content, medium skill content and large skill content. Because of this you won't get bored of swords that easily whilst getting better and more familiar with the weapon tree as you progress. One thing that's great about the sword tree is that your Q makes for a lot of AoE damage on its own and you get even more AoE damage once you unlock parry strike. Because of this the sword is always nice to have in fame farming groups whilst you can also easily level any of the swords on your own in any type of solo content. I would say the sword tree is easy to pick up and learn whilst being highly effective at all levels of play. However, as you reach the more competitive areas in the game you will have to know exactly what your build is capable of and play accordingly. At higher levels, making the smallest mistakes on any of the swords can be very unforgiving. In general, your role is to be a DPS that applies constant pressure to the enemy backline or even wipes them in a single combo. This also reflects in one versus ones where you constantly pressure the enemy with your high DPS, stuns or interrupts. You can see the different skills and passives you unlock as you level up the mastery and within this I think the most important one to mention is the one you unlock at level 70 which is parry strike. Getting to 70 however will take some time for new players therefore I suggest until then you use iron will in pvp which you unlock at level 3. All of the swords get heroic charge stacks from the Q skills which can stack up to 3 times and increase your attack and movement speed for each of the stacks. These heroic charge stacks also enhance the effect of your sword's special abilities, often improving the damage of your E skill based on the amount of heroic charge stacks you have. The exception is with the carving sword, in which it doesn't improve the damage but provides more resistance reduction based on the amount of stacks you have instead. With all of the swords, your heroic charge stacks are consumed whenever you use the E skill, so one of the important things with swords is to keep your stacks up as much as possible. There are two Q skills available on the swords, which are the Heroic Strike and the Heroic Cleave. The difference between them is that the first one is a single target skill, whereas the second one is an AoE. To hit your target with the first one, you need to have a target selected and be in range, and the second one you can use freely. The single target one does noticeably more damage, but the second one builds up your stacks faster. You want to select the right Q based on the situation. In PvE it will almost always be on the AoE, the only exception might be with really tough bosses where you don't need any AoE and really need that additional damage on your Q. Whereas in PvP, in content such as Corrupted Dungeons, where you are in a 1 vs 1 situation, you want to take the first Q. This expands to 2 vs 2 Hellgates as well, and sometimes even 5 vs 5 Hellgates, Crystal League and Arena too. If you need to burst one target down in a coordinated small scale setting, you want to take the first Q. In any other scenario, you take the AoE. Whenever you are in the open world or on the roads of Avalon, always take the AoE for sure. The most used W skills are Iron Will and Parry Strike. The other three W skills are very situational and rarely used. In PvE, your go to is Parry Strike, however, this requires level 70, as mentioned before. Until then you can really use whatever W skill you like most or see most value in. I would probably use interrupt until 40, then start using splitting slash until 70. 
As for PvP, your top choice is Parry Strike, which grants you immunity for a short duration and reflects any damage back at the attackers during this channel. Parry Strike also does damage to everyone around you right after the channel. However, sometimes you might fight against enemies with purges, which are skills that remove your active buffs, and since you need to keep up your heroic charges as much as possible, the Iron Will can do this for you, by providing immunity against purges for a short duration. And since the Iron Will unlocks at level 3 already, you won't have to wait to start using this skill even as a beginner. For your passives, you have the same 4 different options on all of the swords. If you want extra DPS, you want to use Deep Cuts, which is the first passive. If you have difficulties keeping your stacks up or are very reliant on keeping your stacks up, you want to use Heroic Fighting instead. The other two passives aren't really used, especially the second one, Weakening, is very underwhelming in its current state. Increased defense I can see being used in medium and large scale fights, however even then most people opt for Heroic Fighting instead, as it provides pretty crucial utility for those type of fights. And one final thing I want to mention before we get to the differences amongst the 7 swords, is that 2 of the 7 swords are one-handed and 5 of them are two-handed, meaning you can take offense with the ones that are one-handed. These two are the Broadsword and Clarent Blade. Now that we've also got that covered, there's only one thing left, which is to go over all the different special abilities, in other words the e-skills and the playstyles of the 7 different swords. First up is the Broadsword, which for the longest time I thought was named the Bread Sword. It's one of the two one-handed swords, meaning you can use an offhand with it. Typical offhands that go with it are the Facebreaker, Taproot and Musak. This weapon is ideal for 1 vs 1 and 2 vs 2 content, such as Corrupted Dungeons and Hellgates. With only 10 seconds cooldown on your e-skill, Mighty Blow, you can do a lot of damage with this weapon to a single enemy in a very short time. Not only does your E do a lot of damage, it also increases your resistances when you use it, making you noticeably more tanky. On top of that, it also interrupts enemy spellcasting, making for a weapon with a lot of utility and advantages over your enemy in the types of content I just mentioned. This weapon also sees some play in coordinated 5 vs 5 content such as Hellgates, Arena and Crystal League, but most of the time you will see that people prefer other swords over the broadsword for these types of content. Next up is the Claymore, which is pretty similar to broadsword, but definitely sees more play in the 5 vs 5 contents I just mentioned, such as Hellgates, Arena and Crystal League. It's also very present in 1 vs 1 and 2 vs 2 content, such as the Corrupted Dungeons and Hellgates. Although the e-skill charge is single target, just like the broadsword, it's very scary due to the stun it provides. Aside from having a stun on your E, you also become immune to damage and CC effects for 1 second upon use. It's the perfect weapon to single out the target for your team to burst the target down as quickly as possible, which is why it's being played in competitive 5's content. Then we have the dual swords which I think is a really cool weapon to play because once you have pressure on the enemy and your heroic charges build up and jump on the clump with your E skill, you just know whatever is there will get deleted. Unless they pop a reflect skill of course, in which case you will definitely delete yourself instead. The E of the dual sword is called spinning blades and with this skill you can jump to a ground destination and deal a lot of damage to any enemy's hit. Not only do you deal more damage based on your heroic charge stacks, you also do 6% of the enemy's max health as true damage. The jump just feels very cool and powerful to use, and because of it being AoE, you can already imagine it's great for when you are fighting multiple targets. So this would be a perfect weapon for medium skill and large skill content. Think of content such as 20's Crystal League, Territory Fights and ZVZ in general, Faction Warfare, Open World and the Roads of Avalon. Nonetheless, you can definitely make this weapon work in small skill content as well. The Claren Blade is one I have a build guide on which I will link below and which I think might be the fastest amongst the swords for solo dungeons. If you are looking for a sword build for solo PvE, I recommend you check that one out. Although it is great for solo dungeons, you don't really want to use this weapon in solo or small skill PvP. The E skill, Mighty Swing, has a low cooldown with only 15 seconds, and when you use it, you basically do damage to everyone around you. However, due to the nature of the skill and the lack of any additional utility or mobility, this weapon really shines in medium and large skill content. Content such as 20's Crystal League, Faction Warfare, Territory Fights, and any other type of ZVZ content. 
In small scale content or general open world content, you will be easily kited due to lack of utility and mobility, which is why you're better off with a different sword if you go for those types of content. As for the roads of Avalon, it is a bit mixed because it will be very good in areas that are connected to golden portals where you can expect medium skill fights, but not so much when you go through green or blue portals. When you do play the Clarent Blade, your job is to get in the enemy backline and put constant pressure on them so that they have to shift their focus in support and healing. A sword that is verifiable for the roads of Avalon and for so much more content is the Carving Sword. The E skill, Fearless Strike, allows you to dash freely in any direction and does damage to any enemy's hit. It is the only sword that doesn't get an increase in damage on the E skill based on the amount of heroic charges you have. Instead, the more heroic charges you have, the more you reduce the resistances of your enemies, making this weapon a really good addition to any party, especially in PvE, but definitely in PvP as well. This weapon is considered the all-rounder amongst the swords in which it's verifiable for solo open world or roads of Avalon roaming, great to have in any PvE group, used in 5 vs 5 and 20 vs 20 Crystal League, Corrupted Dungeons, Solo Dungeons, Hellgates, Faction Warfare, and pretty much any content there is. Although it is not always as appreciated in medium and large scale content, it can never hurt to have a carving sword in those types of contents as well. Definitely a great weapon to start any of your PvE or PvP adventures if you are a new player. The Galatine Pair is probably the most advanced sword there is. It's being played in medium and mostly large scale content. It's a true ZVZ weapon that can wipe out an entire horde of people and has specific types of builds to make this possible. Think of damage modifying skills on items such as the Royal Sandals and the Royal Hood. The E skill is named Soulless Stream and when using it you slam your blades into the ground which does have a cast time but at the same time can't be interrupted. Based on your stacks, your damage increases, and aside from doing AoE damage, you also reduce the max health of the enemy's hit for 7 seconds. You definitely want to use this skill with 3 stacks active to increase the one-shot potential. Making the slightest mistake on the Galatine Pair is very unforgiving and will guarantee you end up dying for it. So if you do pick up the Galatine Pair, do know that you will have to put in a lot of practice before you get to the level where you start one-shotting entire groups. I wouldn't suggest the Galatine Pair for solo or small scale content, but it is definitely possible to use it there as well. It's just that other swords will be much more effective in those types of content. And finally the Kingmaker, which is the newest addition to the swords with the introduction of the Avalonian weapons. I think no one really figured out how to utilize this weapon yet, which is why you don't really see anyone playing it. However, I did pick it up recently and I think it's just very strong. The E skill is named Majestic Smash and when using it you do damage to people around you and knock them in the air for a short duration. During the knock up you also smash your blade in a line in front of you and behind you and deal damage based on the amount of stacks you have. Once people do realize the potential of this weapon, I think it will especially be played in 5 vs 5 and 20 vs 20 content such as Hellgates and Crystal League. It might even see light in large scale content because of what the skill is capable of. I think it's an improved Clarent Blade for large scale fights with a higher cooldown but with some utility to it, rendering you just as immobile which is why it's not the best pick for solo content. So in conclusion, you can easily level any of the swords because of the fact your Q and W alone are enough to carry you through any PvE content. As for PvP, you have multiple options within the swords category for different types of content, although some of these swords do excel in different scenarios. As always, let me know what you thought of this guide and if you have any additions to it, feel free to share them in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to press that thumbs up. Take care for now and I'll see you guys next time.